Hello and welcome back to another Unreal Engine tutorial. Today I will be teaching you guys how to achieve a Genji Dash. So first things first, uh, in order to, to achieve a Genji Dash, uh, we are going to open up our uh, first person character blueprint. Uh, I'm using the first person character template, the default template of Unreal Engine. Um, so you open up the first person character blueprint, uh, then you go into the event graph. And what we're going to want to achieve here is basically we want to make our character move from one location to another in a in an extremely fast speed. So first things first, we're going to want to enter our settings and go into project settings. And then from here, we're going to want to go into input and action mapping. So here we can hit the plus icon and we're going to name this dash. So we're going to set the shift key, left shift key. And this action mapping will allow us to basically call dash uh, from our character blueprint. And we can tell it what to do from there. So I'm going to right click on the first person character blueprint and type in dash. So now what we want to do when, when, when we dash is the first thing we want to do is we want to create a line trace. So we can do line trace by channel. And uh, for those of you that don't know what a line trace is, a line trace is basically uh, a function or um, something that we use in order to create a line from one point to another. And we're able to use that line to check if things have been hit or if things are overlapping that line. Uh, okay, so in our start location, all we want to do is we want to grab our camera and we want to get world location. We're going to plug that into the start. And for the end location, we're going to want to drag off from first person camera, get forward vector. And then we're going to want to multiply this by, with a float. And this float, we drag out of it, let go, promote the variable. And we're going to rename this variable to dash length. Hit compile, hit save. And then these two vectors, we're going to want to add them up. So vector plus vector. Vector plus vector. And this will result in our end vector. So this dash length will basically control how far we want our Genji dash to be. So let's start it off with 600, 600 units. Hit compile, hit save. All right, here we go. So I'm going to change this debug type to persistent just so we can see what exactly is this line trace. So I'm going to go back over here, hit play. And when I hit shift, nothing happens. But if I move to the left a little bit, you see this red line. And this is the line trace that we've coded in. So I'm going to use this red line to basically get the tip of the location of the line. And we're going to use that as our dash location. So in order to do this, we're going to want to drag out from out hit and type in break, hit result, open this up. And we're going to want to get the trace and vector. So I drag out from trace and vector. Promote it to a variable, and we're going to rename this variable into end location. Or we can call this dash location. Dash location. Hit compile and save. And we're also going to want to get our character's location. So we can do get actor location, and we're going to save this into another variable. And this variable is called player location. Hit compile, hit save. All right. So now what we've done here is we've basically saved a variable that contains the end location of the dash. And we've also saved another variable called player location, which saves where the player is starting from. So now all we have to do is we have to make the player move from player location to dash location. And in order to do this, I'm going to use a timeline. But first, we right click and I'm going to create a custom event called 
dash movement. So from this custom event, I'm going to drag out from it and create a timeline. I'm going to call this timeline alpha. So double click on the timeline. Immediately, I'm going to change the length to, let's make it point, let's start off with 0.2 seconds, 0 0.2 seconds. Then you're going to want to hit the float track and name this alpha. Now on the float track, you're going to want to hold shift and click twice in two different locations, right? So this gives us two different nodes that we can work with. Node number one, we're going to change it to zero, zero, zero times zero value. Node number two, we're going to change it to 0 0.2 because that's what we've set the length to and one. So 0 0.2 and one. If you click these two icons over here, it stretches out the timeline for you so you can see the entire thing. And we're going to hit save and go back into our event graph. So this node alpha over here is basically this line that we've made in the, uh, in the timeline. So when I drag this out, this alpha will go from 0 to 1 in 0 0.2 seconds. So why do we need an alpha? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to right click and we're going to lerp vectors. Mm -hmm. So if you have used alert before, then you know exactly what I'm doing. But if you haven't, then alert is basically translating one vector to another using an alpha. And your alpha is basically your slider. So your alpha begins at zero. And as it approaches one, it gets closer and closer to your B vector. So we're going to plug in our alpha. And we're going to... Uh, so we saved these two locations earlier, right? So we're going to use those locations now. So we're going to want to drag player location, get, and grab dash location, get. And these are the two locations that we want to lerp our character from and to. So from out of this update uh, execution pin, we're going to set actor location. And we're simply going to plug in our actor location into this lerp vector node. Hit compile and save. Um, all right, so after we set all this, we want to make sure that we're calling this dash movement custom function. And we're going to hit compile and save. Something really important to remember is you're going to want to take this sweep uh, boolean in the set actor location. And what this does is basically it prevents whatever you're moving from moving through objects it's not supposed to move through. So if this were unticked and I would try to dash through a wall, I would basically teleport to the other side of the wall. But if you have this tick, then it simply won't let your character do that. So I'm going to hit play here and I'm going to hit shift. And you can see that our character did move. Uh, to our line trace, right? So it is it is moving. But I think it's happening a little too fast that it almost looks instant. So we're gonna exit out of here, go back into our character. We're gonna open up our timeline and we're gonna make this a little longer. So we can go for 0 0.5, let's try 0 0.5. So we update the second node to 0 0.5 and one. And then we can spread it out, make sure that it fits in there. Compile and save. We can, what we can also do is we can also increase the dash length. So let's try 1200. Compile and save. And let's see how this looks. So when I hit dash, all right, it does dash a little further. Oh, I think we're going to want to plug this into play from start, which is why it's teleporting everywhere. There we go. There we go. So now the dash is a little too slow, right? So we're going to want to decrease our timeline to 0.25. Let's try 0.25. And don't forget to change the second node. So you want to change the time node here to whatever the length is as well. Compile and save. And let's see if this looks any better. There we go. This is much quicker. Huh. So 
let's hit save. Um, I think Genji's dash is even quicker than this, right? So we'll go 0.15 and hit play. There we go. We get that nice quick Genji dash. We can jump up, look up, and we dash upwards. Beautiful. Um, so let's try adding a cooldown into this dash so that we can't spam it. So we're going to want to add a boolean and we're going to call it dash on cd question mark. So off of our input dash, we're going to want to add a branch. And the condition we're going to give it is if the dash is not so dash on cooldown not then we do what we set up otherwise we don't do anything over here or we can do a print string let's do print string dash is on cd and we're gonna wanna here we go off of the finish timeline we're gonna wanna set the cooldown to true or actually we're gonna wanna do this right away so as soon as you as soon as you enter here, we're gonna want to put this on cooldown right away. So we're gonna drag it into that pin and hit yes. And then after we're done dashing, we're gonna want to set a delay. So um, we can drag off of this delay and make it a variable. We can call this dash cd. And let's make the dash cooldown three seconds, right? So hit compile and then off of this delay, we're going to set the dash cooldown to false. So what's happening here is basically as soon as you hit the dash button, which is shift, it's going to check if the dash is on cooldown or not. And if it's not on cooldown, then we're going to set it to be true that it is on cooldown because we've, we're using it right now. And then we're going to do the line trace. It's going to give us our end location and our play location. And then it, it's going to execute the dash movement function, which we made over here. And this is where the actual movement of the character occurs. So this is updating the active location, lerping it from uh, the starting location to the dash location. And then after it's done executing the movement, it starts the delay of uh, cooldown. And then after our dash cooldown uh, duration has passed, then it sets the dash cooldown to false. So now once we click this and it checks, it's gonna check that the dash is not on cooldown. So we're gonna hit compile and save and let's see if this works. So I'm gonna press shift and we dash and right now I'm pressing shift but nothing's happening. You can see on the top left, it says dash on cooldown. So I wait a little bit and then press shift again, we get that dash. And then if I'm pressing shift again, it says dash on cooldown, dash on cooldown. So this is how you can make Genji's dash attack. Uh, if you learned a lot from this video, uh, if you enjoyed it, uh, please hit that like button. It will help the discovery of this video. It'll help other people find this video and learn how to make this uh, Genji dash. Um, if you want to support our uh, games, we do make games on uh, the Google Play Store. They're all free. Uh, you can head over to the link in the, in the description to check them out. And we would appreciate it greatly if you left a review and a five-star rating on some of our games. Peace out. Thanks.